Hello all, welcome back to this uh, series on Risk V processor design using Vidlog. So in this session we will see how to develop a uh, load instruction using Vidlog. So in previous sessions we have seen how to execute a R type instruction using Vidlog and I type instruction using Vidlog. Now we will see L type instruction execution using Vidlog. Okay. So basically we will see, sorry, uh, basically we will see how to execute a load instruction using uh, wedlock so it will come under i type instruction okay now uh, we are familiar with this type of instruction lui uh, and some uh, we can uh, we can give some uh, immediate value lui load up immediate immediate value and destination address rd okay so let me draw the instruction format so immediate value 31 down to 12 and rd and this is opcode right so here the immediate value uh, is of 20 bits length that is 31 down to 12 which is of uh, 20 bits and uh, this rd is from 11 down to 7 and opcode is 6 down to 0 so this is the instruction format for this load type instruction right so in this load type instruction what is happening we are providing the uh, immediate value in the instruction itself right uh, and uh, where to, uh, where this immediate value should be stored that is also given in the instruction itself rd this is the destination address so this is the destination address of the register destination address of address of register right we have register set right address of register okay that is also given in the instruction itself and based on the opcode, it is divided whether it is a load, load type instruction or like that it is uh, divided, right? So this immediate value, this immediate value is of uh, 20 bits only. This immediate value is of 20 bits. Now what we should do, we have to sign extend this immediate value. We have to sign extend this immediate value. We have to basically do the sign extension to this immediate value. We have to convert this 20 bit immediate value to 32 bits value, 32 bit value. Okay. How we will convert, for example, if we have a 20 bit immediate value like this 101101 like this, if we have a 20 bit immediate value, then how to convert it into a uh, sign extended value of 32 bit, then simply what we will do is we will replicate this MSP. This is our MSB, right? So we will replicate this MSB the next 12 bits. Okay. So like this, we will fill all the remaining bits with one. That is MSB. So it will become 32 bits. Okay. Now let's see what we are going to do in this uh, low type instruction. Now. This is our top module. Uh, and in this top model, uh, let's see the instruction memory. So in the instruction memory, this is our load type instruction. Uh, in this load type instruction, I have converted the instruction into binary format. And this is fetched with the help of IFE unit. Like the previous R type and I type instructions, L type is also fetched from the instruction memory unit with the help of IFE, IFE module. And the instruction is given to the top model. Okay. And from this top model, what happens again? The instruction out, which is being fetched from the instruction memory, will be given to the control unit as well as DPU unit. Okay. So before that, what is happening here? Uh, the immediate value. Okay. The immediate value should be sign extended, right? So here, immediate value underscore LUI. So here there will be immediate value underscore LUI. So this is the sign extended value. This is the sign extended fetched value from the instruction sign extended value. We are performing the sign extension on the immediate value which is given in the instruction and we are provide we are doing sign extension and storing it in immediate value LUI. You can observe here we are replicating the MSB 10 times and uh, maintaining the remaining bits as it is 31 down to 12 as it is and we are providing it to the DPU unit. This immediate value, sign extended immediate value is given to the DPU unit. 
and from the control unit now let's observe the control unit what is happening when we given that instruction to the control unit so here you can observe if the op code is 0 double 1 0 triple 1 so if the op code which is equal to 0 double 1 0 triple 1 then what happens it is a load type instruction load instruction so here in the in this case what happens i am activating the following signals so here alu control will be given some value and there is one more signal called lui underscore control lui underscore control so this will also be asserted okay so lui control signal will also be asserted and it is given again to the talk module so basically this lui control is the output of this uh, cu unit okay all other uh, signals will be equal to 0 beq blt beneq bgeq all this will be equal to 0 only this lui control will be equal to one and it is given to top module so here you can observe lui control is given to the top module from this control unit so this lui control uh, signal is for, uh, given to dpu unit from the top module okay here you can observe so what happens is so the control unit will give this lui control signal to our top module so this top module what it will do it will give it to our dpu unit data path unit okay so like this the lui control signal is further given to dpu unit okay now we will go to the dpu unit so in this dpu unit you can observe so lui control is the input for our uh, dpu unit so this is the lui control so from the dpu unit where this signal is going it is going to register file unit rfu unit so from this dpu unit the lui control signal is given to data path unit dpu sorry it is given to register file unit rfu okay register file unit rfu okay like this the lui control signal is given from control unit to register file unit so we'll open the register file unit and let's see what is what is it so we have already discussed uh, um, briefly about register file unit. So here, if the LUI control signal, which is the input of our register file unit is equal to one, then the immediate value, which is given to this module is being stored into the register memory. Okay. So what is happening is if LUI control is equal to one, then regmem our register memory of write address is equal to immediate value okay what is this immediate value where we are getting this immediate value this is the sign extended value sign extended value where we are doing sign extension we are doing this sign extension in the top module do you remember this so we have do we are doing this sign extension in the top module okay so in the top module we are doing the sign extension and we are providing it to the dpu unit from the dpu unit we are giving it to the rfu unit so in this rfu unit we are uh, getting this sign extended value that is immediate value and from where we are getting this write address we are getting it from the top module only so in the top module while we while we are instantiating this dpu unit we are providing the uh, instruction right by slicing i have shown in the yeah here you can observe 24 down to 20 and 11 down to 7 like this we are providing the addresses right so uh, by slicing only we are giving the destination address so in the rfu you need to observe so this right reg num1 is the input for our rfu unit so from this we are getting our uh, input of our module so like this we will get the address so this register file unit is instantiated in the dpu you can observe here right reg num1 which is the input for our dpu so in the top module you can observe when we are instantiating you can observe uh, instruction out 11 down to 7 okay 11 down to 7 is nothing but our destination address okay like this what what we are doing in the top module when we are getting instruction 
this instruction we are slicing instruction 11 down to 7 this is the destination address right this is the destination address which is which is being given to dpu unit from this dpu unit we are giving to rfu unit so like this the right address uh, to which address location uh, the data the immediate data should be stored that that we are giving to our uh, register file unit okay